four. A CRN original. Attention, you are about to hear the captivating voice of an icon in the movie industry. You have heard him and seen him in performances in over 140 films. He's met and influenced many world leaders, and now he's about to tell you how to unite the America he loves. That job's filled. Unique. Unique. Brilliant. Brilliant. And unpredictable. Unpredictable. Robert Davi is a renaissance man who writes, directs, sings, and does it all with excellence. Yeah, it's okay. We're all very impressed, but let's get on with it now. Robert Davi believes he should use his voice to both repay and help unite America, the America that made his dreams come true. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Robert Davi Show. Hello, friends. Mike Gary. Robert Davi Show sitting in for Robert Davi on an assignment. Hopefully, he should return shortly. Our best to him. Thank you once again for tuning in. If you're listening to this live on CRN Digital Talk Radio, perhaps you're watching live on Facebook, crntalk.com, or on Tiki Live, on Roku, or on one of our many great affiliates around the country or worldwide on crntalk.com. As we round out this 2021, a lot to talk about. We're going to, first off, we want to, two great Americans have passed away in the last 24 hours. We lost the crown prince, the king, some might say, of American football, Mr. John Batten. We're going to talk about him later on in the show. We're also going to talk about Mr. Harry Reid, former senator of the great state of Nevada, passed away too. Both great Americans. Talk about them in a second. But a quick uh, COVID update here. Now the CDC, I think the CDC, despite what you think about COVID, or vaccines, or in general, that the CDC, the Center for Disease Control's messaging, has been terrible. And I don't know if necessarily you can blame them, because this is an all-new scientific data that needs to be analyzed, and this is brand new stuff, folks. And so the experts might get it wrong a little bit, but I don't think that necessarily should make you skeptical of all science. But CDC says that Omicron, this new Omicron variant, is not as prevalent as originally thought. The Omicron variant of COVID-19 represents a much smaller proportion of cases during the week that ended December 18th than previously estimated, the CDC said. Even though the Delta variant appeared to be the primary strain for most of December, Omicron still represents a majority of cases right now, 58.6%, according to the CDC's latest analytical estimates. Where it stands right now, the CDC originally forecast last week that the Omicron strain represented 73% of cases for that week that ended December 18th that has since been revised down 22.5%. Now, I think this data is unreliable because there is, I know just anecdotally, that a lot of people are now utilizing the home tests. And so I think that actually there's two ways to look at this. I know that the new home tests that have been delivered are the ones that people can buy in the store are revealing a lot of false positives. Yeah, I saw someone get some of their sink water, literally put a drop of the sink water inside of the, you know, the testing spot where you're supposed to put the blood, and it came back positive for COVID. So it just goes to show how unreliable those things are. It's, if we don't know if the test itself is unreliable or perhaps the methodology that's explained to the consumers is flawed, but I know several people who have, you know, during the holidays, they were testing consistently nearly daily so they can protect themselves and protect their family members during the holiday season. And one person would test positive, then the next day pass negative, vice versa, vice versa. So if the testing is inaccurate, that could actually maybe mean that there's far less COVID, specifically this Omicron variant. But also if these tests are considered somewhat reliable, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not of millions of people who have tested positive at home by themselves. And that doesn't get reported to the national database. Yeah. And it's it's so strange, seventy three percent of it, it. So it's been revised to twenty two now. That's what they're saying. That's what the CD says. But like I said, the CDC has been wrong. They've been wrong on multiple fronts regarding this pandemic. Like I said before, though, the caveat is I did. You know, this is all brand new, folks. I mean, most science is done through observation, and observation is going to take time. 
I'm not saying that the CDC and our, you know, bright, breasted, brightest scientists and doctors out there are flying blind, but they're navigating a new paradigm. One thing that I don't want to go on right now, though, is a cruise ship, because over 85 cruise ships under CDC investigation following COVID outbreaks. The cruise industry, which has been just absolutely decimated for the past two years and is just trying to get back to even. But 86 cruise ships are experiencing COVID-19 outbreaks because cruise ships, folks, I mean, I love going on cruises myself, but they are petri dishes. If you don't get COVID, you're going to get norovirus, you're going to get the flu, you're going to get something. <laughs> the affected cruise lines, of course, include Disney, Carnival, Royal Caribbean, and Norwegian. It's also worth noting that an additional three ships are being monitored by the CDC due to reported COVID infections. Those case numbers are below the agency's threshold to start an investigation. Cases reported in more than one-tenth of a percent of passengers or a single crew member in the previous seven days. So, a lot of people are testing positive right now. The positive test rate of in-facility testing, not at-home testing, but actually documented positive tests were 2.8% in Los Angeles. Now they're up to 11.2%, which is nearly 600% increase. But like I said, a lot of people were testing. A lot of people were actively testing so they could be, feel a little bit safe about spending time with their family over the holidays. We might be on the other side of this, folks, though, because we are seeing that hospitalizations are staying stagnant and if not dropping, especially amongst those who are vaccinated and boosted. The majority of people hospitalized with the Omicron variant are not vaccinated. So get vaccinated, get boosted, live your life. That's all I want to say about COVID right now because I'm sick of talking about it. Now, this is interesting right now. Joe Rogan. A lot of people know Joe Rogan. He's a comedian. He was a former host of the NBC hit Fear Factor. And now he's got a very successful podcast. The Joe Rogan Experience Podcast is available wherever you can find your podcast, just as you can find this podcast, the Robert Dobby Show podcast. But Mr. Rogan, uh, he and I have had a, a tenuous relationship. I He's a tremendous podcaster. He gets an amazing variety of guests guests from all different walks of life he'll have a comedian on one day he'll have a former navy seal on the next day and he'll have a democratic activist the next day i also think that one of the reasons that a lot of people on the left have with joe rogan is that he is not it's hard to put him in a box because he has said he's kind of a libertarian but more of a, a lower L libertarian he says that almost all of his policy positions lean left except for gun control and he had an interesting thing to say we talked yesterday about politicians you know possible 2024 candidates for president of the United States and how they've fared in 2021 and their prospects moving forward Mr. Rogan had an interesting point today he says that the one person that for sure can beat former president Donald Trump in a general election hands down in a landslide would be Michelle Obama. He said that Michelle Obama has the charisma, has the intelligence, has the presence. And he's, this is what he also said, quote, as the first lady to the best president in my lifetime, it would be a no-brainer that she would defeat Trump in 2024, end quote. Not my words, Joe Rogan's words. Do you think she's going to run? No, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. The best president in Joe Rogan's life? That's what Joe Rogan said. That's what he said. I'm sorry, it's not like Obama, like, did anything completely terrible, but he also didn't do much of any good. <laughs> well, we can litigate you know? that off there. Um, but M Michelle Obama, if liberals are looking for Michelle Obama to be some sort of savior to bring the party back to the good old days of the Obama administration, days that I thought were quite successful, personally. Yeah, I mean, I didn't say they were bad, but I, they could have, he could have done a lot more, I feel like. I think, I, yeah. In eight years he was there. Yeah. I think there's certain issues uh, I have personally with President Obama's administration, specifically his policy on drone strikes. Also, I thought that the Affordable Care Act though I thought 
was a noble idea. I mean, what's not noble about trying to get people affordable health care? Well, yeah. But the way that it was rushed through, the way that the bill itself actually put more money in insurance companies' pockets was a little bit flawed. But overall, I think that President Obama did a good job. But Michelle Obama has no interest in running for president of the United States. First of all, she's not a politician. And second of all, she saw what happened to her husband, not only when he was campaigning, but also when he was in office, just the terrible abuse that he got. But liberals, Michelle Obama is not going to save you. The squad is not going to save you. Elizabeth Warren is not going to save you. Elizabeth Warren right now is definitely positioning herself for 2024, even though President Joe Biden last week says that he does intend to run for a second term. That's been, there's two big political questions out there. A, will Joe Biden run for a second term? B, will Donald Trump run for president in 2024? Those are two unanswered questions right now. But according to Joe Biden, he will run. He will run, even though he will be in his 80s in 2024. Jesus. So I think both parties need to do some soul searching on who their nominee is going to be. Would that make him the oldest president we've ever had? The oldest president to be reelected, re that's correct. But Michelle Obama, she's done enough. She can stay home. President Trump, we shall see. Joe Biden, we shall see. Davi, back in a minute. I'm Al Simon, 91 years young. I created Balance 7 20 years ago. I don't believe God intended for us to be old and sick. For 10 years, I studied pH and how important it is to the immune system. No doctor or hospital can do what Balance 7 can do for you. Balance 7 is the key to unlocking a healthy immune system. In three days' time, you'll feel more energy, less joint discomfort, and clarity of thinking. Bring your body back to balance. Order now and receive free shipping and a free bottle of my skin. Get your body back in pH balance with Balance7.com. Balance 7 unlocks the immune system. Your body will respond in a wondrous way. Your energy level will go up, joint discomfort will be reduced, and heartburn no longer a problem. We have a 100% money back guarantee. You have everything to gain. If you're sick and you don't want to be, Balance 7 is the answer. If you're healthy and want to stay healthy, Balance 7 is the answer. Go to Balance7.com. That's Balance7.com. Use the code word BALANCE and get free shipping. Balance 7. Seven.com. That's balance7.com. Hi, this is Fred Dwyer talking about my favorite Italian restaurant, Angelo's and Vinci's, at 550 North Harbor Boulevard in downtown Fullerton. It's a fantastic place to celebrate the holidays. Come inside and dine in our Italian town square, complete with our 10-foot Christmas tree. Enjoy our food made from secret family recipes, pasta, chicken, seafood, salads, and our incredible pizza, and our incredible desserts, including my favorite, the Terry. Tiramisu, flown in from Italy. Angelo's and Vinci's is the perfect spot for your holiday dinner or party. Get your shopping done for everyone by purchasing holiday gift certificates. Feel the spirit at Angelo's and Vinci's, 550 North Harbor Boulevard in Fullerton. Call 714-879-4022 or visit angelosandvinci's.com. Does your current bathroom need to be updated immediately? Introducing One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling, the complete and hassle-free way to get the new bathroom of your dreams in as little as one day and for as little as $1.99 a month. Yes, the experts at One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling will come to you anywhere in the country and show you all the customized options. Now you can have a brand new bathroom in as little as one day. Large or small bathroom. If you want a new bathtub or shower installed, we can do it in as little as one day. And if you call right now, you can save $750 off your remodel. We make it easy by offering you financing as low as $199 per month. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation. 855-525-7454. 855-525-7454. That's 855-525-7454. 
Robert Davi. I want you to know this is nothing personal. It's purely business. <laughs> and we're back. Robert Davi show. Mike Gary sitting in. Joined by the young and strapping Nick Davi. What it do? And real fast before we start, before we talk about Mr. John Madden is passing, I want to talk just briefly about bureaucracy regulation at the municipal level. The paradigm between the two parties, Republican and Democrat, is that Republicans want free markets, low regulation, personal responsibility, states' rights, local control. The paradigm of Democrats is that they want a strong federal government, they want a strong social safety net. And I think one thing we can all agree on is that no one likes going to the DMV. That's a universal feeling right there. I don't care if you are die in the wool, far right Republican or even Peace and Freedom Party, <laughs> or far left member of Antifa, Democratic Socialist of America, both of them can agree. Both of them can heartily agree on a handshake that going to the DMV is terrible. <laughs> a lot of the regulations, no one likes to have the gas guy come over. No one wants to wait three months for the paperwork to go to the state and then back down to the DMV. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. And this is bearing out right now, and this is, I know, a topic close to Nick's heart, in the California cannabis industry. California and other states legalized recreational cannabis years ago, and yet still, the cannabis industry is hamstrung by onerous regulations, and specifically, it's denial of access to the banking system. Right now, legislation is being proposed co-sponsored by both Democrats and Republicans, bipartisanship, that would remove cannabis from the Schedule One narcotics list, therefore allowing it to be legalized at the federal level, and therefore now receipts from the cannabis stores can be entered into the banking system and therefore into the general monetary supply. But of course, It's bogged down. And so therefore, we're still seeing recreational cannabis shops kind of operating in a fly-by-night situation. And also dealing with immense municipal regulation. This leads me to tell a story about solar. A really close friend of mine had a solar system installed on her house. The solar system is completely set up. It's completely ready to go. All it needs to do is pretty much get turned on. But before it can get turned on, the city inspector needs to come out and look at it. City inspector is supposed to be out here three months ago and has yet to show up. And so California, Los Angeles, city of Los Angeles, you are Mayor Garcetti, Eric Garcetti. You talk a lot about green energy. You talk a lot about self-sustaining energy, about solar, about wind. But yeah, it's your city, it's your departments, it's your regulators that won't allow someone to flip on their solar system until an inspector who's making God knows how much money an hour to come out, give it the once over, give it the glance and check a box. Why isn't that regulation, why isn't that inspector contracted out to a private company why isn't the solar system itself the solar installer installers why aren't they certified through some sort of accreditation where they can just flip the switch themselves inspect it this is what they do for a living you drive around here in los angeles you see solar cells popping up on roof after roof after roof and that's a good thing first of all it doesn't it stops money going from a corrupt DWP. If you want to know how corrupt the DWP is, you can Google that. But it seems to me, Nick, that a lot of regulation, a lot of bureaucracy, not only at the municipal level, but at the federal level, is about perpetuating employment. Perpetuating that bureaucracy class. 
because if this was farmed out to the contractors themselves or farmed out to the solar installers themselves, that takes away a nice civil service job for someone that drives around in a nice city owned vehicle, is making about hundred grand a year with a 4% cost of living raise per year. Nice pension well benefits, mm -hmm. nice medical cush job, cush job, <laughs> cush job. It's crazy. And there's many, you know, municipal civil service workers, you know, first responders. But there's a seamy underbelly of the civil service bureaucracy apparatus that's corrupt, that is exclusionary. If anybody's ever worked in civil service, you know that there's those old graybeards in the back of the office that have been there for 30 years, and they're just waiting year after year, because every year that they put in, it's more money they get when they retire. You retire at 55 in the city of Los Angeles, you're getting 3,600 a month. That's mailbox money, folks. You retire at 60, you're getting 5,200 bucks a month for the rest of your life. Mailbox money. Why would you want to increase efficiencies? The whole thing about the deep state, this is the deep state. The deep state's not motivated by ideology. It's not motivated by nefarious political concerns. It's about economics. It's about money. Everything is. The largest employer in the United States is the government at the federal level, the state level, city level, county level. You're not going to kill the goose that laid the golden egg, even though if it's better for everybody. Privatization. Neoliberal privatization. Can't say that. Can't say that at all. Especially in blue cities and blue states. Look, folks, I think organized labor has a great place in America, especially to provide safe working conditions, to provide a forum for workers to air grievances. But these pri public sector unions, they're not about policy as a whole. They're about protecting their members. And what their members want is secure income for the minimum amount, the minimum amount of work for the maximum amount of compensation. A lot of people in my family spent their entire careers in the public sector and they don't understand what it's like to work for a small business. Where the workers' rights come first. And workers' rights, I'm not talking about losing your arm in a set of gears. Public sector unions are talking about, they want six months paternity leave. They want three months paid vacation like they have in France. They want things that are completely unsustainable for a private business. And if it's unsustainable for a private business, then by all means, it's unsustainable for a public business, which this is. Because it's our money. It's the public's money that are paying these salaries, that are paying these benefits. Dobby, back in a minute. Let's talk about your credit cards. When you first start using them, it's a slow drip. You make charges, then more charges, then bills come, and they keep coming. When you open your statements, the floodgates come pouring in. You realize you have more credit card debt than you can afford, and you're barely making the minimum payments. Wouldn't it be nice to make one affordable payment and have all your credit card bills covered? Make this free call and learn our responsible way to get your credit card bills paid and under control. Sponsored by Consumer Education Services, a nonprofit organization. 800 876 3643. 800 876 3643. 800 876 3643. That's 800 876 3643. 
CESI is not a loan company. The establishment of a debt management plan may adversely affect your credit rating. Non-payment of debt may lead creditors to increase finance and other charges to undertake collection activity, including liquidation. For the getaway of your dreams, come to Hawaii's playground, Kaanapali Beach Resort, on the fun side of Maui, where the world comes to play. Find your spot on Kaanapali Beach with three miles of white sand, 12 resort properties, two golf courses, and two shopping centers. Enjoy the playground of Hawaii's ancient royalty. Kaanapali Beach Beach Resort is Hawaii's original master planned destination resort and home of the Hawaii Food and Wine Festival. With views of two neighboring islands, you can breathe in the land's natural beauty from your favorite resort or golf fairway. Come experience Kanapali's own special brand of Hawaiian hospitality with world-class dining, relaxing resorts, water sports, and activities of every kind. For romantic, family, and great friend getaways, discover the options of Kanapali Beach Resort, where the world comes to play. Plan your getaway today. Visit kanapaliresort.com. That's K-A-A-N-A-P-A-L-I resort.com. What are you so happy about? I'm on the pill. Aren't you two a bit old to worry about having more kids? Not her, me. Uh, you lost me there, buddy. Steel Man pills. Things weren't always looking up if you catch my drift, so my doctor prescribed me a little something. Like Viagra? Yeah, but that's expensive, and it wasn't covered by my insurance. Steel Man pills cost me less than three bucks a pill, and virtually the same effect. I just called and got over 40 pills for only $99. <clears throat> I have this friend who might be looking and... Well, if your friend want some help, the consultation is free over the phone. No clinic. Steel Man Pill sends it in the mail in a confidential package. I'm on it. I mean, my friend will be on it. Steel Man Pills. Going the extra mile to help men with erectile dysfunction. 800-605-1683. 800-605-1683. 800-605-1683. That's 800-605-1683. If you have ever thought about remodeling your bathroom but were worried it would take too long or cost too much, then stop worrying. Right now, Jacuzzi Bath Remodel has designed a collection of high-quality, custom products and perfected the one-day remodeling experience so you could enjoy your new bathroom faster than ever before. It's a worry-free bath remodel from the most trusted name brand in the business, Jacuzzi. A Jacuzzi bath system fits in your existing tub space. It's a no-mess installation with an amazing style selection, factory certified installers and a limited lifetime warranty just dial pound 250 on your mobile device right now and say the keyword update for 50 percent off installations with no interest and no payments for 12 months replace that old bathtub with a walk-in shower for a safer bathing experience if you've lived in your home for over 15 years it's time to remodel your bathroom for a virtual or in-home appointment dial pound 250 now and say the keyword update that's pound 250 and say the keyword update the Robert Davi Show. This is authentic. Una furtiva lagrima Nelio. And we're back, Robert Davi Show. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, this high-quality broadcast is available at Podcast Daily. It's available wherever you find your podcast. Just search for the Robert Davi Show podcast. So sad news yesterday. We lost an American icon, an iconoclast. John Earl Madden. Anybody who's my age, older or younger, when you think football, you think John Madden. John Madden passed away in Pleasanton, California, at the age of 85. Of course, he was the head coach of the Oakland Raiders for 10 seasons, winning them a championship in Super Bowl XI, which was 1977. And after retiring, he served as a color commentator on NFL telecasts and multiple networks, Fox, CBS. He won 16 Emmys. Never had a losing season as a coach. Second highest winning percentage in league history. And of course, member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Most people, though, I think younger, would think of John Madden as the video game guy, right, Nick? Yeah, of course, that was the first thing that came to mind, but I remember first seeing him in uh, Little Giants. <laughs> you, you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the man had a great love for the game. His enthusiasm for football and how football and organized sports can kind of bring people together and can kind of 
mold boys into men. Mm-hmm. Report is is he made over two hundred million dollars just off the video game alone. <laughs> Talked about mailbox money last segment. That is the ultimate mailbox money. I mean, having a video game named after you is going to do it for sure. Just slap your name on it. Apparently, the most recent Madden, he was making $16 million for his licensing likeness agreement. <laughs> that's just off the... I mean, that's not counting his broadcasting salary or any of his endorsements or any of his work as a pitch man. So he made himself some money. He's been stacking up that shot all, that's for sure. And of course, when anybody passes away... It's got to become political. Is it seriously becoming a fuck? It sure is, Nick. Fudge. It sure is. Uh, I can't even believe that. Last night on Twitter, liberal Twitter was going a little bit apoplectic because of the lionization of John Madden. Literally hours after the man passes, well-known liberal Twitter personalities who I will not name because they do not deserve the oxygen were saying, wow, I wish that John Madden wasn't as lionized as he is now for being a proponent of a game that not only leads to significant and severe cognitive decline through CTE, but also a game that is representative of a plantation society. Meaning that so that's the majority of players in the NFL are African-American, and that these players aren't empowered because the powers that be, the old rich white owners, want to keep them subservient in their place. Now, there's a grain of truth to that. A yeah, grain. There is. I'd say so there is. But what really got this to everyone's attention, I think, is Dwayne The Rock Johnson's show on HBO called Ballers. Mm -hmm. You ever see that? Yeah. Um, they really dive deep into that. But I feel like... I, they So in the show, they... They portrayed it as modern day slavery. Yeah. Which is I think that's a poor a, a a spurious analogy. It's ridiculous to me. Because professional football has brought a lot of opportunity to a lot of different people, particularly people from very disparate backgrounds. Yeah. It is true that NFL players aren't nearly as protected as other players when it comes to their contract status because they don't have guaranteed contracts. But isn't that a true representation of meritocracy? How many times have we seen in other sports, Nick, where someone signs a big deal, multi-million dollar, multi-year deal, and then shows up the next season like 30 pounds overweight? <laughs> Like, because that money's guaranteed. Times. That's that money's guaranteed no matter what. Mm -hmm. The only reason, the only way you can really literally break that contract is if you murder somebody. <laughs> See Aaron Hernandez. And he still played in, in, the, in, the, in, in the league for like what a few more months after he killed somebody. It's, yeah, I really recommend the uh, HBO Max documentary on Aaron Rodgers or the uh, James Patterson book based on it. It's a wild, wild story. It's but crazy. going back to John Madden. How is he culpable for the quote-unquote plantation society or, or quote-unquote the CTE in general? I played football. The coaches never taught us to hurt ourselves. Coaches taught us the proper way to tackle, and if you didn't tackle properly, you might get hurt. We knew that. So if you're going to make John Madden the scapegoat for CTE then anybody who's even tangentially associated with football is responsible for its CTE. I mean, everyone knows what they're getting themselves into. Especially now. Yeah. Especially it's now. Like it's, oh, I, have, I had no idea that could happen. And also, th there's no recognition either of the immense strides that the NFL and college football has made. I mean, college football is a completely different story. If we want to talk about plantation society, we can talk about college football. But I think that's starting to change, too, with the NLL, NIL laws. But the league itself has made great strides to increase player safety, much to the lament of fans. When you see a, a, a player called for targeting, that's designed to protect for player safety. But then you get the, uh, you know, the football guys who are like, oh, back in my day, you were allowed to literally stab somebody on the field and it wasn't a penalty. Yeah, there's just certain things that don't fly anymore. And that's a good thing. That's an evolution, as it should be. Every sport evolves. Everything in society evolves. Like, 
in UFC, <laughs> when the UFC was first starting out, it was just literally like extreme fighting. They had no weight classes. They could have someone that's five foot two, 110 pounds against someone that's six foot four, 230 pounds. And uh, groin shots were allowed. <laughs> <laughs> one per fight. What? Are you serious? One yeah. per fight? You get one? one? One groin shot per fight. And like nowadays, if you accidentally kick someone in the groin, you get five minutes to, you know, stop the fight, relax, recompose yourself. So we saw it in boxing too, where, you know, before heavyweight heavyweight fights would go 18 rounds. Yeah. Now most uh, sanctioning bodies will not allow any fights to go over 10 rounds. I mean, because it has going 18 rounds of just a full on fist fight. Okay, I'm sorry, but if five minutes of a fist fight is tiring. <laughs> like, you're gassed. But also, we saw what happened to those guys. We, I mean, look up an interview with Joe Frazier. Mm. I mean, look up an interview with any of the you know prominent boxers in the 60s, 70s, or even the 80s, and you can tell that they are suffering effects. They look punch drunk. I mean, going round after round, I mean, I can't even imagine... I'm surprised that more boxers haven't had heart attacks. I mean, obviously in the past, not nowadays, but I'm surprised that hasn't been more of like a thing. But we, I mean, when it comes to personal responsibility, I mean, boxers make that choice. Football players make that choice. And they love doing what they They'd do. They absolutely love it. They, they wouldn't, they, they love it. And they make, I'm, well, not all of them, but they all make a good amount of money. And they know? could put themselves more in, the, the in a person. position for a great life. Even if you... Even if you play college football, you know, I kind of have been a proponent where the players need to be compensated somewhat because they're not allowed to have jobs. And so pretty much the only way that they can have spending money in their pocket is if their parents send them money. Yeah. And, and not a, everybody. Not, not everybody. I yeah. wasn't getting a stipend check from my parents. That's for yeah, sure. And so there needs to be, so, I mean, I don't necessarily think they need to be paid millions of dollars, which we're seeing now with these NLI rules. Where, no, give them like a, a, like a standard paycheck as if they were working. Give them like minimum wage every month, you know, what, a thousand bucks a month. Uh, 1,200, 1,600 bucks a month, I would yeah. say. Yeah. You know, depending where you are. Because I mean, 1,200 is going to go a lot far a lot farther you know in certain places than others mm -hmm. and but also it, like some some college athletes get they get injured and then they can't do anything because all they were doing was football and that's so why it's important get to get that degree yeah, yeah. that's, that's why it's too. important to get that degree we're gonna talk more about john madden and we're gonna talk about harry reed right after the break stick around Have you heard about Vine to Bar chocolate? It's the winemaker's chocolate, the world's first chocolate made with well-vined Chardonnay Mark from the beautiful coastal vineyards of North America. Gently pressed grapes are harvested after juicing, dried and finely milled and carefully blended into the finest dark chocolate. The Chardonnay Mark contains highly beneficial grape nutrients, flavanols, and has a natural sweetness that flavors the luscious dark chocolate. Mouthwatering, flavorful, delectable dark chocolate goodness with Chardonnay sweetness and beneficial nutrients. And it's alcohol free too. It's Vine to Bar chocolate. Order some today at vinetobar.com. That's V I N E T O B A R.com. Cold ship to your door, it's Vine to Bar. Vine to Bar chocolate. Visit us at vinetobar.com. What are you so happy about? I'm on the pill. Aren't you two a bit old to worry about having more kids? Not her. Me. Uh, you lost me there, buddy. Steel Man pills. Things weren't always looking up if you catch my drift, so my doctor prescribed me a little something. Like Viagra? Yeah, but that's expensive, and it wasn't covered by my insurance. Steel Man pills cost me less than three bucks a pill, and virtually the same effect. I just called and got over 40 pills for only $99. Uh, I have this friend who might be looking and... Well, if your friend want some help, the consultation is free over the phone. No clinic. Steel Man Pill sends it in the mail in a confidential package. I'm on it. I mean, my friend will be on it. 
Steel Man Pills. Going the extra mile to help men with erectile dysfunction. 800-605-1683. 800-605-1683. That's 800-605-1683. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1 800 785 9618. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1 800 785 9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. The Robert Dobby Show. Mike. You let me down, Mike. You're making me look bad. I thought we had an understanding. And all I expect is a little cooperation. Sorry, Robert. And we're back. Robert Dobby Show. Mike Harrison and Siren Digital Talk Radio. SirenTalk.com. Facebook.com slash Siren Talk. Also follow. You can follow me on Twitter. Mike underscore Gary with an E. You can also follow Sierra and Digital Talk on Twitter. Nick, are you on Twitter? I am, but I haven't used it <laughs> since like middle school. But I think it was Nick underscore underscore Davi. It's not Nick underscore 420 Davi. <laughs> uh, I, Speaking of Twitter. I should change it to that low key. <laughs> Speaking of Twitter, we're talking about the passing of John Madden. And of course, anytime anybody of note, no matter if they're completely out of the political spectrum, which John Madden was, I didn't know John Madden's personal politics, but of course the liberal Twitter mob has got to come after him, come out and play a at empty wheel. She's got 256,000 followers. Quote, Everyone eulogizing Madden. How many concussions could we have prevented had he not turned brain injuries into a video game? Huh? There's a lot to unpack there. There's a lot to unpack there. So is she going to actually maybe tweet like at a World War II veteran, like on his deathbed? Like, wow. Everyone eulogizing G.I. Joe, who served in World War II. How many shootings could we have prevented had he not turned World War II into a video game? I mean, the logic behind this this tweet is stunning to me. First of all, John Madden was talking about concussions back in the 90s before Miss At Empty Wheel was probably even out of diapers. <laughs> and of course, she you know somewhat tries to backtrack a little bit and not even backtrack. Ma quote, Madden is not solely responsible for the fact that the NFL has, in the face of real evidence of lasting unaccounted injuries, only accelerated the process. But he is the one thing that glamorized that. Are you insane? He's the one? Th he's the one thing that glamorized that? If you want to place blame on something, place it on the NFL itself. Place it on society. And honestly, when it comes to athletes being injured, at least for hockey players, I don't know how it is, probably not for basketball or soccer, because I know those sports, there's a lot of diving. But in football and hockey and baseball and all those sports, uh, when players get injured, they don't want to say anything about it yeah. because they want to keep playing. They want to make their money. They want to, you know, and they also love playing. They don't want to be hurt. They want to be a part of the team. Exactly. So they're going to not fake injuries in those sporting leagues, but they're going to hide their injuries. Absolutely. That's I mean, what most of them do. I, I promise. I think this. that paradigm is starting to shift a little bit, especially in the NBA, because there's so much money at stake. Because, yeah. you know, the contract's, are a little bit shorter year-wise as they were maybe in the 90s and the early 2000s, but the value of those years are ex expanded exponentially. And so if you get hurt in the last year of your three-year deal, 
that can stop you from signing your next deal, which could be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. But I want to get back to taking this two by four to at empty wheel. And then of course, the liberals always do this too. When you make a really bad tweet, and then as this tweet went viral, and not in a good way, because everybody was quote tweeting it and responding it about what a terrible take it was, that they will oftentimes double down, but oftentimes will troll the people that they know they've offended or upset. More from at empty wheel. Quote, by the way, BTW, by the way, actually loving all caps, the responses to the original tweet. Quote, how dare you claim video games li led to tolerance for brain injuries? Bring it. Makes my writing about it later child's play. And then, of course, what always happens is it comes down to identity politics. You're a liberal. You do a bad tweet. Quote, please leave your names in your most misogynistic takes, as well as your belief I've never played a contact sport. Blame it on misogyny. <sighs> <laughs> what? Blame How did honest. this turn into misogyny? I don't understand what's happening in life anymore. It's Things. not about, we talked about this, I believe, yesterday off air, that it's not about your take. It's about how many people see that take. It doesn't ma matter if that take is makes people angry. It doesn't pick, matter if it makes people happy, sad, joyous, fractious. It's about quote unquote engagements. Every time someone clicks on that tweet, replies to that tweet, favorites that tweet, even if it's to tell her how wrong she is, that makes the tweet even go more viral. More clicks. Now, Empty Wheel, who has 256,000 followers, now probably has, let's see, 280,000 followers, 25,000 followers in one day. I feel like some of these tweets are just planted to like create controversy. It's performative. Yeah. It, it's performative, and both the left and the right do this. But at empty wheel, I mean, can't you wait until the man has at least been put in the ground before you can make your social commentary about a, a subject that you are, just have nothing to no knowledge about whatsoever? I mean, I was always taught never, never speak bad about the dead. So, well, some bad juju. There. Well, well, like what about Hitler? I mean, you can say to me. Well. <laughs> That's different if it's someone that's, like, <laughs> evil, you know? Screw Hitler. <laughs> Obviously, but you know what I mean. Yeah. If it's, like... Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's uncouth. It's, it's... it's like when, when, when Kobe died. Like, you, yeah. you're not going to hear anyone saying nothing bad about Kobe. Well, we did. We did. We did? Oh, we did, sure. Oh, they brought up the whole Colorado thing for sure. But let's move uh, on, though. Well, Let, <sighs> let's move God, on because we, we'll get stuck on that. Let's talk about uh, Senator Harry Reid, who's passed away as well. Mr. Harry Reid, uh, it's, it's a fascinating character, is a long-serving senator from the great state of Nevada. His father was an itinerant gold miner who never made pretty much a dollar in his life, and his family, his mom, supported the family, get this, Nick, by be doing laundry for the 16 brothels that were in Silverston County. <laughs> oh, my God. You know that show, Dirty Jobs? That's a dirty job, folks. <laughs> And he really kind of raised himself up as Bruce Straps. He was a boxer. He was a tough guy. And he was a great proponent for the great state of Nevada. He was a Democrat, of course. And also he was instrumental. He was one of the very first national political figures to encourage and then endorse former President Barack Obama to run for president. But also later in his career, and perhaps it was kind of, kind of his brand because Nevada contains you know, Area 51, is Mr. Reed really fought hard to get the federal government to be really, really transparent when it comes to Nick? UFOs. The little green men, the flying saucers. And I don't know if this is kind of tongue in cheek because I, I've, I've done it. I've gone to Nevada and visited Area 51. It's a tourist trap. It's cool. I mean, if you want to go there, just look for the exit, XXYYZZ, <laughs> right? Right? Or is it some other combination of those? It's literally like a strange look. It's like Zizix <laughs> is what it says or whatever. But that leads to the question, do you believe in UFOs? Oh, yeah. So you think that we're not alone in this universe? No, there's just look at how many galaxies are in the universe. We don't even know if the universe ends or if it just keeps on going. Like we have no idea. There's like so much we have no idea about. And with all these like past things that have happened like the rockwell crash 
Roswell crash, Ro 19, 1948 yeah. in Mexico. Yeah. With all those little things and the details being released by the Pentagon, I don't know. You never That's really know the with, the, with the with the government nowadays because anything could be some sort of ploy to distract you from one other thing. The thing I was never kind of, I, I was never really a believer too much about. I, I I agree with you. There's it's just you know it's logic that there is life out there because the yeah. universe is so vast and expansive. But I was really kind of like, well, you know, it's so far away. Why would they come here? Blah, blah, blah. But after seeing some of that released footage from the Navy pilots, where you have like Navy pilots, the cream of the crop, like the top gun guys who are just like, bro, what is that? The USOs is they're saying to look out they're for like, now. They're like, dude, what is that? Now they're, so apparently it's under, what, what is it? Unidentified submerging objects. Yeah. That's what they are. Well, now that they call them as they call them un unexplained aerial phenomenon rather than uh, oh, UFOs. Okay. I mean, I don't understand why they have to change the name. It's the same thing, unidentified, unidentified flying object. But I mean, I don't want to turn this into Coast to Coast AM, but we'd like to have a little bit of fun in this last segment. So, I mean, let's say the government did know that there's an existence of UFOs and maybe even had one in a hangar somewhere. Why would the government keep that secret? I mean, I believe if everyone on our planet knew there was some sort of technology that was way greater and more advanced than ours they're gonna want that and it's gonna start other things between other countries and or or it's gonna go against someone's like religion or it's just gonna create too much controversy maybe even at the time it w i don't even really know i think it's religion i think a big part of it's religion i definitely because think so if, if there's the existence of if extraterrestrial life extraterrestrial intelligent life is proven that really goes against a lot of fundamentalist biblical teachings. I think that's part of it too, but also about the technology factor. I don't necessarily really buy that argument because I mean, perhaps maybe these extraterrestrials, their technology, they have amazing transportation technology, but maybe they don't know what air conditioning is. Yeah. You never know. Technology is all based on the needs of the society itself. I mean, they built the pyramids, I think. If, there's no, you, there's actual hieroglyphics in Egypt of wars in the sky of people on ships. Hmm. Interesting. That's a little strange to me. And literally, we can't even build pyramids like with the same size stones that they used in Egypt. We can't physically do it, even with the technology we have today. Well, rest in peace, uh, Senator Harry Reid. Yeah. You were a fun guy. Very sad. Thanks so much for listening. Really appreciate it. Make sure to check out the podcast. Make sure to download Siren's cell phone app where you can listen to all eight of our digital networks. It's a regular phone call. Dial pound 250. Say Siren after the tone and the app will be automatically downloaded to your device. Take care. Thanks a lot. See y'all later. God bless America.